everybody, it's Katie. Uh, recently, a few times it has come up that our family does not have a microwave, so it's been requested that I do a video talking about why. So just briefly, um, let me start off by saying that I don't have like, I really don't have like a super strong opinion about this. Um, I definitely don't think that like nobody should have a microwave. I think you should do whatever works for you. Uh, yeah. For us, I would say 75% of the reason is just that we don't feel it's necessary. We have had microwaves in the past, like we rented apartments that came with microwaves, and we honestly almost never used it. Um, I hated cleaning it, and I don't know, we just we just don't use it. I, I actually have always felt, like, I mean, I grew up, my, my, my family had a microwave, um, and I never felt like it heated food well, that there would be, like, patches of, you know, underdone stuff and, like, molten little pockets and stuff, and so it wasn't, like, not my preferred method of cooking or heating food. Um, I definitely know that they help people and that they're convenient for people. My sister works three jobs and she's like, she said that she would pretty much like die without a microwave because she's never at home, she never has time to, you know, spend a lot of time cooking and heating things up and so that she really needs that given her lifestyle. Given our lifestyle, I don't know, they're just, they're pretty much, they're workarounds for everything and we've been doing it so long now that it's not even, it's just automatic, like we don't even think about it. Um, I think the only thing we've encountered that we really can't do much with is like microwave popcorn because of the way it's packaged and everything and like it's packaged with a bunch of preservatives and everything. Um, you can't take it out of the package and really get it to pop any other way. But otherwise, I mean, we if we need to heat up water, we use a teapot on the stove. That's how I make tea. That's how we do it. Even if you had like instant oatmeal, there's almost always instructions to use boiling water um, to things like... Um, Melting anything, I just use saucepans. Uh, melting chocolate, I use a double boiler on the stove. Just day in and day out, it doesn't really feel like we're deprived or that we're, you know, we're missing out on anything. We have a super, super small kitchen. I think it's like six feet by six feet or something. It's really tiny. So we wouldn't even have the counter space or like the, the space um, for a microwave. And especially um, at the, you know, the amount that we use it, it wouldn't be worth it. Um, let's see, so that's about 75% of the reason. It's just habit and stuff and, you know, we just don't miss it. The rest of the reason at this point is because I just feel like, um, you know, sort of irradiating your food probably isn't the best way of dealing with it. Um, I mean, I know all cooking sort of destroys the food in some way, and denatures proteins and stuff like that, but, um, microwaves, the way they work is like agitating the molecules, um, and microwaves have the same effect on the human body so I know there's very very little radiation that comes out of the microwave and it affects you like unless you're right up against the glass or something but I just still feel like why not just keep that out of our environment if we can um, and and out of our food and not like affect our food in that way so that's the other percentage I will show you how I like heat up leftovers and do a couple other things not using a microwave I'll insert some clips here hopefully that answers some of your questions um, and like I said, again, I'm not trying to, like, offend anybody. These are pretty much just my opinions. Um, you should definitely, like, do your own research and come to your own conclusions. So here are some ways that we live without a microwave. So I imagine a lot of people use the microwave to reheat leftovers. Um, and what I do pretty much is just use the stovetop um, for certain things like sandwiches or, like, a piece of quiche or something that I want to keep, like, in its original shape or, you know, make it crispy, I'll just do it in the toaster oven. Um, but for things that can be mixed up and heat up pretty fast, I just use the stove. So I'll show you how do I do that. All right, right now, um, all my food is in there. I actually like these things getting all mixed up, so I'm just going to mix them up together and that way everything will get heated uh, sort of at the same, uh, you know, at the same time. Um, so I'm turning on my stove right now. It's gas, so it heats up pretty fast. It is 1151 and we will see how long it takes this to get to um, the proper temperature. Right, it's 1153 and my food is steaming. You can probably hear it simmering a little bit so I'm going to turn off the burner. So on medium heat that took two minutes and I just stirred it a couple of times like you would um, probably with the microwave. You'd probably have to stop it and you know stir your food a couple of times to make sure it heats evenly um, but it is ready to eat now so two minutes. So here's something I'm going to use the toaster oven to reheat. This is leftover falafel and french fries and we have a really old little stained up toaster oven, but it works fine. 
Um, it's pretty fast and it's better than heating up the whole kitchen using the whole oven for such a small amount. Um, so this has been on, let's see, it's 350. It's been preheating for a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and stick these in. I think maybe it'll take about 10 minutes and they'll still be crispy, but you know, warm all the way through. And while they're in there, I'm going to just prep everything else for the falafel. All right, it's been 15 minutes and everything is sizzling and looks good. Let's Bye. eat lunch. Bye-bye. Somebody's hungry. <laughs> Here's another big microwave thing, right? Popcorn. Um, what we use is like the old-fashioned, regular, you can see just like popcorn kernels. We buy them in bulk or Mike picked these up from like a different store, but they're easy to find in any grocery store. And I actually like this kind of popcorn way better because it reminds me of the kind I had when I was a kid. So um, what I do is just put like vegetable oil, whatever kind of oil, in the bottom of a pan, sort of just to cover the bottom. And then I put in just enough kernels so that the bottom is also covered in kernels, but only in one layer. So I'll show you what that looks like. If you can see that, there are just enough to fill the whole bottom, but that's it. Um, the heat is on like medium high, and what we do is put the lid on, and it makes a ton of noise. You have to shake the pot around so that the air kind of vents out um, from the lid. So I'm warning you, it's going to be loud, um, but you'll see what that looks like. So just keep it moving so that nothing burns and the steam is able to escape a little bit. I turned on my heat at 11.57. It is now 12 o'clock exactly. And I have a full pot of perfect popcorn. It's that easy.